Hello everyone. This is the 21st part of the story, Avatar in DC Universe. Chapter 63, A World of My Own Making Part 1. Aiden's Point of View. I wanted nothing more than to explore the lush jungle growing out of the lion turtle's back but my patience won out. There was something more urgent I needed to take care of. I flew down to the beach and settled into a meditation pose, legs crossed while my hands rested on my knees. I lifted a hand and tapped on the minimized icon of the system at the corner of my eyes. The display enlarged and instantly, my sight was assaulted with a prompt. Congratulations. You have unlocked a new achievement striking out. Striking out, after trying out the team thing and following a few unpleasant situations, you have finally decided to leave the nest and strike out on your own. Due to that, you have received a new perk, Blank Slate. Blank slate your abilities cannot be copied whether through scientific or magical means. Perk list. Adaptable body your body is susceptible to different exotic stimuli. As a result, it grows to adapt to different things without any drastic change of form. Chi blocker take down your enemies by targeting their chi points. Dragon fist air variation, combine air bending with chi blocking to send a small shockwave through a target's body successfully knocking them out. With each unlocked element, variations of the technique can be acquired upon completion of the advancement trial to Grand Master level. Blank slate your abilities cannot be copied or stolen, whether through scientific or magical means. The new perk blank slate was a breath of fresh air. As I got stronger, there would no doubt be people like Lex Luthor who would try to copy my abilities or clone me. This perk would also allow me to deal with supervillains like Parasite who couldn't steal my abilities anymore. I swiped away that window and looked at the training points I'd accumulated so far. Interestingly, the points had increased. A lot. Training points 25. A smile appeared on my face. With this, I wouldn't need to simply go through the stances and forms of firebending. I could now spar against a fire-bending opponent and acquire experience along with perfecting my bending. To do that efficiently, I decided I wouldn't use air bending until I mastered fire bending to the expert level. That way I didn't fall back to air bending as often, giving me enough familiarity with fire. Plus, I have to admit, fire was my favorite bending. There was just something fucking cool about blasting shit up. I wasn't a pyromaniac by any means but damn, if I didn't want to explode Clarion apart. In fact, knowing Clarion, that would happen sooner rather than later. Call it a gut feeling but just because I left the team, didn't mean that it was the end of my feud with the light. Taking into account the other thing, it was a definite that I was going to interact with them more than I was comfortable with. I clicked on the training points tab and a new window popped up in my vision. It was a list of characters' names made up of notable airbenders from regular practitioners to grandmasters like Aang, Tenzin and Zaheer. There was a section depicting a list of firebender characters, but this one was incredibly sparse. The only notable name I saw was, Firebender Soldier, which was 50 points. The rest were grayed out and I wouldn't waste my points on a firebending beginner. They basically had the same starting line as I, hence I would probably learn nothing from them. Maybe for mob training, I could use them en masse. The prices set to buy each character was different. For beginner benders, it was 25 points, for experts it was 50 points, masters was 100 points and grandmasters, the highest level, was a whooping 200 points per character. The points I had were only enough to get a trainee bender. I sighed and closed down the window. I ran a hand across my face in frustration. Seems like getting these points is not going to be easy. We all have to start from somewhere. I told myself while getting up. I would hold on to my points for the time being and try to follow the basic fire bending stances and forms I got once I had unlocked the element. Sparring with a beginner was useless and to get an expert I needed 50 points. The way to get the training points was through doing missions however. How would that translate into real life though? I mean, I had left the team and struck out on my own so to speak. Would I get the training points based on missions I would give myself or missions that I would get from others? Lucifer probably had a lot of things he needed me to help him out with. 
would that count as a mission? On the flip side, I realized the word mission was used very lightly here. The training points had jumped from 5 to 25, an increase of 20 points after my battle with the team and the Justice League. That wasn't a mission I'd been issued with. So maybe it meant, I could get the points simply by being proactive in the use of my powers. Though it had to be a combat setting. And not a spar, I doubt the avatar system would allow that loophole. If my theories were correct, getting the points would not be as hard a task as I'd initially imagined. I looked at the points flashing at the corner of my eyes and smiled. Just you wait. For the time being though, it was time to explore and hopefully get something to eat. The avatar state always left me feeling drained. Maybe it was from the strain my body was under, bending all those elements and their subskills at the same time but I needed to feed and sleep. The sleep thing could be delayed until I knew where I was though. Flying was too eye-catching, so I decided to use the trees, jumping from one to the other like a ninja. Plus, the self-restrictions on the flying thing was also to make sure I stuck with the rule I had made for myself. No use of air bending unless it was an emergency. Despite that, the air itself helped me slow my descent onto a branch, as well as keep my movements silent, even without my urging. Perks of being a grandmaster, baby. The island was actually deceptively huge. From a bird's eye view, it looked no bigger than two soccer fields. But walking on the ground or in my case, leaping from one tree to the other, I realized just how large the damn thing actually was. To get to the center of the island, which was where I was going, was taking longer than I thought it would. Wow, the humans from the Avatar world were fucking bold for hunting this thing to near extinction. Then again it's a fine line between courage and stupidity so who knows. I delayed mostly to see if I could come across something to eat in the way of fruits. My efforts were eventually rewarded when I saw a purple mango-like fruit on the tree to my left in front of me. I took a leap and landed on its branch. My hand reached out, plucked the strange fruit and studied it. It's not too late to go for the coconuts Aiden. It's not too late. I joked. What of this thing was poisoned? Then again, I had my adaptive physiology to help out with that. As long as the poison wasn't too strong, I should adapt to it. Too strong and we would have a problem. I really needed to find a way to increase the strength of adaptive physiology or maybe even get regeneration as a perk. I do remember healing after being shot on the chest two times. Maybe I should look into that and figure out how it had happened. Did the avatar have a high proficiency in water healing or was it something else? And the list of shit I need to do continues to grow longer and longer. I sighed while turning the fruit in my hands. I shrugged and decided to take the plunge. Biting into the fruit, my face lit up at the unexpected sweet flavor. It was a combination of the slight tanginess of grapes and the tasty quenching juiciness of mangoes. A man grape? No that sounds wrong. A grapango? Manth? Sounds like a disease. Grango? I guess grango is fine. Man I suck at naming things. This was interesting. A fruit that was a fusion of two. Exactly in line with the animals in the world of Avatar. A perfect example would be the island I was standing on. A lion turtle had the claws and teeth of a lion but the body structure of a turtle, hence a lion turtle. Zoologists would go crazy for this island. I imagine it would be interesting for them to track the evolution process of the different animals here. Which increased my curiosity as to where I actually was. Was I an avatar? I plucked another grango and ate it, letting the purple juices flow down my throat and easing my thirst. I still needed water but this was a great substitute for it. At least for the time being. Ngan would go crazy for this, trying to find ways she could use the fruit to bake something. And Connor. I paused in my eating and sighed. I had been avoiding thinking about the team. The betrayal was still fresh in my mind. The worst part was that I missed some of them except Wally and Robin. Fuck those two little shits. Seeing a pattern there? One of them was a self-righteous piece of shit who hated me because I was the object of his jealousy. 
The other was nosy and curious, playing detective not because he wanted answers but because he wanted to copy his mentor. The other ones I was mostly angry at and hurt. I still couldn't believe that they had all been a part of it. Even Artemis. I closed my eyes and took a deep breath. There was nothing I could do now except move forward. It was time to come to terms with the fact that the team and I were done. Even if things worked out in the future, I was not going back. It was time to start changing the world, just like I'd said I would. After eating my fill of Grango, I went back to leaping from one branch to the other, headed to the middle of the island. Chapter 64, A World of My Own Making Final Part Aiden's Point of View Finally. I thought, coming up on the center section of the island. There was an open space that looked like flattened ground, brown and made of earth. However, I knew I couldn't bend it even if I had the earth element unlocked. The interesting thing about the empty space was the inscriptions carved onto its surface. The elements were depicted following a cycle and in the middle of them was an infinity sign. I frowned while flying down slowly. That infinity sign wasn't canon. From what I knew, there were only four true elements and one source element. I call it source because it was through it, one could take away someone's bending or restore it. The lion turtles could even grant it, though I wasn't sure if any of the avatars could. From what I knew, neither Aang nor Korra, the only two known avatars who could use this bending could grant bending to a non-bender. I was of course talking about energy bending. A bending style that granted you the ability to manipulate someone's life energy, as shown through Aang taking away Fire Lord Ozai's bending, thereby winning the fight without taking his life. Then Korra would later use it to restore Lin Bifong's earth bending. It was the most versatile, powerful and unknown bending style out there. And seeing the way the four classical elements were represented around the infinity symbol, it didn't take a genius to understand that it was the symbol representing energy bending. The fact that I was also standing on a branch that was growing on an island at the back of a lion turtle, the only creatures that could naturally energy bend, only added more merit to my conjecture. Could this be a chance granted to me by the avatar system to learn energy bending? And if not the system, did the avatar state have a power to cross dimensions to the avatar world? I wouldn't get answers merely by keeping my distance so I decided to fly down. Even then, my cautiousness was at an all-time high. I didn't know what to expect and this could be a trap, no matter how unlikely that seemed. The minute my feet touched down on the open space, a weird hum instantly spread out from the contact. I could instantly feel a connection slot itself deep into my soul. And then information started flowing into my mind. Pain assaulted senses as my nerves cried out. Arg. I groaned while clutching my head. It felt like I was about to explode at the sheer mental strain my mind was being put through. I could simultaneously see every grain of sand, drop of water, chlorophyll tint of the leaves, life force of the animals in the whole dimension. Yes dimension. And it wasn't just one. There was five of them. I lost my strength and fell down to the ground, shuddering in pain. Stop, please, sto. Despite my plea, the pouring of information continued. My whole being unraveled and I felt free of all constraints, flying through a vacuum and giving it meaning, screaming and humming. I burned into ashes and became living flames, eating through everything and switching to an excited form that left shock and explosions in my wake. Then I froze over and broke into tiny fragments of ice that melted into water, flowing freely, gently yet violent in a basin of earth that contained me in small quantities, bringing nourishment and healing. Then I hardened. Harder than the ice had been and stubborn, refusing to move or give way easily, burning when I was mad yet kind when I was calmed. I became all the elements, understood them in a way I could never have despite the training. In that moment, I understood clearly why I could never control the elements as I did without the avatar system being the bridge. The load of it all was immense because, everything was connected into one massive super-consciousness that defied all known understanding. It wasn't something I could explain. The disappointing part was that it did little to increase my skill in fire-bending but I still looked at it as a gift. 
a gift of intimate understanding into the scope of what I was dealing with. It was a gift because I now understood the kind of power I had at my fingertips. All of creation. That kind of power, I shivered, getting up painfully. The fist thing I noticed was the sweat that clung to my body and costume. I unclasped the visor and ran a hand through my hair. The taper fade would have to go. New beginnings and all that. But that's besides the point. I was in shock. I now knew where I was and it was both surprising and, no that's about it. It was very very surprising and unexpected. The icon of the minimized screen flashed golden, meaning I had a notification. I enlarged it, curious about what it was. Congratulations. Yet again you have attained another achievement. How cool is that? How rad. How positively beaming you must be. Seems like someone is finally taking his job seriously. I mean, what ambassador doesn't have their very own embassy? It took you a while to even get one but hey, at least you did it. This century. Moving on you don't get a perk because, this base is more than enough reward for your efforts. Unnamed, five elemental dimensions. Energy plane, where you are currently standing. This plane is the nexus of all the four dimensions. You can access the other dimensions by simply wanting it, from here. You can also boom tube to earth and back whenever you want. This ability cannot be used to boom tube from one earth location to another, only earth and back. Air dimension, tall mountain peaks, beautiful sunset and a never-ending breeze that can turn violent within the blink of an eye. Known to be the home of the flying bisons, arrowhawks and pegasi. Wait, the last two are from somewhere else entirely. Bummer. The perfect place to attain enlightenment, due to the spiritual connection and communion it grants those who meditate in it. Fire Dimension The mythical land of dragons, phoenixes, and the golden crow, CK. The last two don't exist but this dimension provides you with a suitable environment to practice fire bending. Stoke your heart's flame and who knows, maybe you can meet a dragon on the way. Water Dimension Relaxing beaches as gentle water licks at your toes, a plethora of ocean life and unexpected sudden hurricanes, hails and frost. This dimension provides all life nourishment yet breaks those whose will is found wanting. The realm of, too many animals to list. Mermaids. Yup, hope that's enough. Practice water bending to great efficiency, locked. Earth Dimension Ever wondered what people walk on, build on, plant on, work on? Earth is a pretty big deal dude. Trust me. This is the realm of the badger mole and basically every other living creature not confined to water. Provides an environment to master earth bending and its subskills faster. Locked. Notes. 1. If you're wondering how this was all possible, that's easy to explain. In other words, find that out yourself. 2. Just as a reminder, the boom tube only works for teleporting towards the earth or back to the unnamed five elemental dimensions. Long name, would really help if someone gave it a better, preferably shorter one. 3. None of the animals are really sapient. So don't worry about intelligent creatures trying to outsmart you. Though I would be careful about dragons, they've been known to breathe fire. 4. The whole plane is autonomous and self-sustaining. 5. The dimensions related to the elements you have not unlocked are locked for your own good. Any other type of element is severely suppressed while on a different elemental dimension. Note end. Is it just me or are the notifications getting more and more annoying each time? Must be a sub-routine one of the beings, responsible for bringing me here made. I'm just lucky the system isn't sentient, not in the truest sense, otherwise I would be like other MCs running around trying to accomplish its bidding. I dismissed the display to the corner of my vision and slightly slumped in my position. I took a few steady breaths to center myself, feeling the lingering pain from the forceful information feeding into my brain abate a little. Then a smile started forming on my face. The smile changed into chuckles before I started laughing like a madman. This, this was just crazy. Finally, something to light up my day. I spread out my hands and looked up at the sky, taking a deep breath and murmuring a heartfelt. 
thank you. To whatever deity responsible, even if I already knew the culprit. To answer your question, the one culprit was me. Or well the avatar stayed at least. It was through its machinations, the cleansed father box and Moro's distinct elemental code that this whole pocket dimension had been created. That's what the ten hours I had been missing were for. The Avatar state must have known that sooner or later, the team and I would clash and decided to create another option for me. A base. Here's the crazy part, the whole pocket dimension was constructed from the salvage dome that the God Equation had created. The Father Box's essence was pulling energy from the source and then using Moro's code, translating that energy into powering the spatial walls around the pocket dimension. Then more of that energy would give meaning to the concepts of life and order imprinted upon all the five dimensions by the avatar state, which was why I felt so connected to everything. Which was also why I knew that the pocket dimension was constructed in the middle of the moon. It hadn't warped away to somewhere else as the Justice League had thought. The avatar had simply moved it from the dark side of the moon deep into its core. How, how was that even possible? What the fuck couldn't it do? Maybe I was right in deciding I wouldn't use it anymore. The unpredictability of the state was its main failing factor. I couldn't trust myself because it wasn't really me. At least not yet. So I was keeping it under lock and key until I could get a handle on it. I looked around in excitement. A world of my own making. I wonder what I should call it. Chapter 65, Naming the Dimension Aiden's Point of View I was crap at naming things. That wasn't an exaggeration. Despite my dad thinking about getting a dog, what convinced him not to was the frankly atrocious names I gave him. Fluffy Killer doesn't exactly roll of the tongue. And Mr. Tyson sounded like plagiarism at best, kinda. You know, like those parents who name their kids after famous people like Barack Obama. Which isn't a crime but, no. Basically, I didn't have that gift. So, faced with an amazing dimension full of limitless possibilities, I chose to keep it simple and straight to the point instead of complicating shit. An attempt to respect it. So the dimension was an elemental one. Apart from Pangaea, which was just too on the nose and Genesis that would run the risk of being associated with the gods of New Genesis, I only had a small list that was summarily dismissed due to one reason or the other. There was Wakanda, mostly as a shout out to my guy, Chadwick Boseman, the embassy, that was in line with the whole ambassador theme that the Avatar system was trying to sell and lastly Elemental Dimension. I went with Elemental Dimension. It was neutral, all-encompassing and would probably not insult anyone while also keeping the spirit of the dimension. The naming itself needed a declaration. So I stepped to the middle of the open space and spread out my hands. My face was slightly blushing due to the theatrics. But if I'm doing it, I should go all in. Plus ultra. 100%. With the power flowing deep within me and the unification of my body, mind and soul, I named this dimension of power, the elemental dimension. I felt something suddenly change. As if the whole space was previously just a black and white drawing on the canvas that is reality but now it was colored and vibrant. Full of life and the essence of existence. A soul. The notification prompt from the system flashed and I curiously maximized the display, hoping it was something good. Congratulations. You certainly have a flair for the dramatic. Must be a hit with the theater folk. Maybe that will help you finally get a girlfriend. Ahem, moving on. You have completed the final and hidden step to claiming the dimension as your own. Due to that, no one can enter or exit without your permission. Wow. Now I'm suddenly glad that I named it. I can't imagine apocalyptic forces or even the light boom tubing inside my dimension and catching me off guard. I breathed out and decided on the next course of action. There was something I needed to check to know if I would have the entire apocalyptic forces after my ass. My consciousness delved into that familiar feeling above my groan, steam escaped my mouth as I jumped. Two twin flames appeared under my feet, jetting me off to the shore of the island. The flames were yellow and hot, almost melting my heat-resistant boots. 
Whoa. The flight itself was uncontrolled and erratic. I would suddenly lose control of the flames and spin before smashing into a tree and getting leaves in my mouth. I groaned more in embarrassment than pain while standing up, behind me a trail of broken trees and branches could be seen. This wasn't as easy as I thought it would be. But if Ozai could do it so could I. I was the frigging avatar for crying out loud. I tugged on the same warmth burning below my gut and sent it out in a tightly controlled stream towards my legs. That was my mistake. Fire, just like any other element could not really be controlled at my current stage. Only manipulated. Trying to dominate it was like trying to forcefully tame a wild lion, you would get slashed into ribbons for your effort. That's why the blast that occurred sent me careening to the side yet again. More trees suffered the same fate as their brethren. I was careful to put out any flames before they could burn the whole place down. Twigs, grass and leaves clung to my hair, annoying me even more. It was clear that I wasn't going to get this skill down now, so I decided to bench it for the time being. I was getting impatient and frustrated. Those two feelings only made the flames produced harder to control, so I changed tactics to jumping from one tree to the other just like I had done before. A few minutes later, I arrived at the shoreline of the island. I didn't waste a single second and plunged into its salty depths, while holding my breath. I could go for five minutes without air, a skill that was easy to improve due to my increased lung capacity through practicing my sonic abilities and my physical parameters. I swam down quickly, following the length of the island bed rock. A few hundred meters down, I came upon a massive humongous head. The sharp teeth and ferocious head made my heart skip a bit in surprise, as the lion turtle, containing an infinity sign on its head turned to look at me. The glint of intelligence I had been expecting was, missing. It was just an animal. Maybe it was too early in the elemental dimension's development and the creatures inside would get smarter as the dimension grew along with me. Or maybe I'm just giving myself false hope. Who am I kidding, this must be a restriction to make sure I don't convince the lion turtle to implant me with the knowledge of energy bending directly. The avatar system seemed hell-bent on me improving by myself. It would provide opportunities and only reward me when I put in the work. In some ways it was the best set up. Getting things easy would feel like such a cheat. This way, at least I had something to feel proud about. Self-made man yo. I swam closer to the lion turtle, which was staring at me unworried about my intentions. I suppose it had a right to feel that way. At my current level, it would take a lot of effort to kill it. Maybe if I could form the same elemental bomb my avatar state had, then yes. But that was a slippery slope into losing myself. I touched its head and dived into the same connection I felt with everything living in this whole dimension. Then I tried to dominate its will with my own. A click sounded in my head and I could sort of feel the mind of the lion turtle. I nudged on it and gave it an order. The front limb came up and provided me a platform I could step on as I was raised out of the water. We broke through the water sending it rolling around. I massaged my temple in discomfort and pressure. A pressure that was getting out of hand with each passing second, I tried to keep the lion turtle under my control. I sighed and cut off the link. Instantly, the pressure disappeared but I now had my answer. If Darkseid came to associate my control over the animals in my dimension with the father box's essence used to keep it running, I would have more than a few problems. This dude made subjugating universes a side hustle. Universes. I couldn't let anyone inside this dimension without getting strong enough to defend it should it come to that, or without trusting them enough to allow them entry. And so the fucking list of things to do continues to grow larger. The answer to all my troubles seemed to be more power. It would pay to be careful not to lose myself in search of it. With that done, I decided to check out the dimensions I had unlocked. The first one up was of course the air dimension. I closed my eyes and wished to portal there, a yellow boom tube portal appeared before me and I jumped in after waving bye to the lion turtle. Not that it could understand me. The very first thing I noticed was how calming everything felt. I was standing on a cliff. Below me were gently floating clouds, carried around by the breeze. 
peaks of snow, covered mountains and rocky outcrop spread out as far as the eye could see. I could tell that this was what the dimension was made up of. Thousands upon thousands of highlands that had caves where flying bisons and other air elemental creatures lived in. I settled into a meditation pose and fell into a calming trance. I don't know how long I sat there but given the fact that I could feel the tightened muscles and stiff joints in my legs, it must have been more than a few hours. My stomach also growled in hunger. I got up and stretched, feeling relaxed and calmer. I spared one last look at the calm surroundings and promised myself I would definitely come again for the peaceful atmosphere. Next, I portaled towards the fire dimension and the difference between it and my previous one was suddenly very clear. It was hot, incredibly hot. The surroundings were active volcanoes with steam coming off of them and darkened clouds above head with continuous flashes of lightning bolts that slammed to the ground and left blackened soil and soot in their wake. It was harder to breathe and I hadn't noticed it before in the air dimension due to how low a proficiency I had in fire bending but I could feel it now. Suppressing a bending I had beginner proficiency in wouldn't have made a difference but inside the fire dimension, air bending was heavily restricted. And I could feel it. I could feel the shackles placed on it. I sank to my knees breathing heavily. A boom tube appeared on the ground and I sank through. Maybe I should hold off on coming here until I was back to 100%. Then spending a few hours would allow me to slowly adapt to the increased heat low oxygen. I found myself at the shoreline of the lion turtle. M.M.H., this place also needs a name. How about, sanctuary? In a way, it's like my sanctuary. A place, separate from the other four dimensions yet connected. A place to unwind without worry. Sanctuary it is. To feed myself, this time I decided to have fish. It was really easy catching them when they weren't afraid of me. I almost felt bad. Almost. After trying to roast them with my fire and ending up with charcoal remains, I reluctantly made a fire using some of the dry branches I had acquired from deep within the island. A few fruits, the grango kind topped off the five-star meal and I enjoyed myself while watching the setting sun. So far, only sanctuary happened to have that function. The air and fire dimensions had been bright throughout with no discernible source, so I'm thinking that would be the same with the other other two as well. I gathered a few palm leaves before the fire burning and just chilled. Thinking about my plans. Tomorrow, I would be going back to Earth. This marks the end of part 21 of the story, Avatar in DC Universe. Thank you for listening. Please like the video and hit the subscribe button to listen more. Hit the bell icon to get notified of all the new content uploaded to the channel ASAP.